hey, yo. Me to Angela, but I call her Yee. Angela Yee, I'm Angela Yee, and full transparency, the weather is so bad in New York that people cannot get to work today, so I fortunately managed to make it in. My guy Eddie is taking over for Navy until he gets here. We know Eddie from The Breakfast Club, so I'm familiar with him. He's a little rusty in here, but it's okay. Um, Mano is on the way, but I promise y'all, my makeup artist isn't here today. She's on the way. Everybody is super delayed, so just giving you guys a heads up. Today's also a very special day because it is National Coffee Day. And y'all know, I love my coffee. I already had my coffee today, but I'm going to have another one in celebration. Uh, coffee Uplifts People, that's the name of my coffee company and my coffee shop. So don't be afraid to go to Target.com and support this black-owned business, all right? Coffee Uplifts People. You can get us at Target or CoffeeUpliftsPeople.com. Um, and for me, the main thing is educating people about... Oh, you know what? Today's also my brother's birthday. So happy birthday, Brian. He's a year and three months older than me. My parents knocked us out, one right after the other, as soon as she was able. <laughs> I don't know another nicer way to say it. But Mona Scott Young is going to be joining us today also. Mona, by the way, loves coffee. The first thing she says when she comes in here is, do you have any coffee? So yes, Mona Scott Young is going to be joining us today. And she actually um, has a new show that's on BET Plus. It's like a movie. It's a two-part movie based on a true story. It's called Love and Murder, Atlanta Playboy. And so you guys, uh, Tay Diggs is starring in that as well as Keisha Sharp. And there's a lot of people that you'll be familiar with when you guys get a chance to watch that. Carly Red is in it. Um, Ernestine. Uh, Yandy's in it. Yeah, there's a lot of people. Young Jock is in it. So make sure y'all check that out on BET+. Plus. But let's get the show started the way we only, the only way we know how, with some positivity on a Friday. Because you know we love a Friday. 800-292-5150 is a number. Call us up. Let us know who you want to shine a light on. Have your coffee with me this morning on National Coffee Day. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm a shine. I'm a shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Turn the light on them. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. Yo, it's Way Up with Angela Yee, and it's time to shine a light on them. That's where you guys get to say something positive, shout somebody out, show them some love on this platform on Way Up with Angela Yee. And I want to shine a light on somebody who I think is absolutely amazing. I tell her all the time that she is an inspiration to me, and that is Deborah Roberts. Now, we talked about this the other day. She is taking up co-anchor duties at 2020 on ABC News. And this was all started. She was recruited by Barbara Walters, and she's excited to be following in the footsteps of Barbara Walters as well. But I was watching her on the news this morning, so I'm excited to watch 2020 tonight. Um, to see what she has been researching and what she's bringing us. But she's been working with the show for quite some time um, as a contributor. So now she is expanding her role. And she's also an author, by the way, I told you guys before. And she's been up here uh, talking about her book where she's paying homage to some of the greatest teachers that she's had um, while growing up. And a lot of other people contributed to that book, like Oprah, Rosie Perez, talking about the best teachers they've ever had. So I just want to shout out to her. She's um, just an amazing person. Uh, and you can watch that 2020 show on uh, True Crime Vault. She has a podcast called 2020 True Crime Vault that's going to be talking about the series archives and repurposing episodes and all of that. But shout out to her, Deborah Roberts. Um, I'm just happy to see that. I'm happy to see that somebody who is deserving. She's a true journalist and just a really nice, great person. So shine a light on her. Now, who do you guys want to shine a light on? Oh, and I got to shine a light on my brother because today is his birthday. I mean, I cannot forget that. September 29th. Shout out to my brother, Brian Yee. Yes, my brother is the person that is always there for me when I need him. I remember when I was younger, I needed to borrow $8,000 after crashing someone's car. And he was able to give that to me right away. And I definitely had to pay him back in installments. But to know that there's somebody, and that's not an easy thing to have, even in your own family, that you can call upon when you need them for any reason whatsoever. I think that's one of the most important things I could tell him anything. He's not judgmental. If I call him right now, I'm like, Brian, I'm having an emergency. Can you help me? He'll be there. So I appreciate my brother, Brian. Uh, shine a light on you. Now, Will, how are you? Hey, how y'all doing today? Good, good. Who do you want to shine a light on? 
I want to shine a light on my son Jojo. But I want to shine a light on all my kids, but more so my son Jojo. Even though he's going through a lot of medical issues, he still finds a reason to smile. And I just, you know, just want to give my son a shout out, Jojo. How are the other kids with everything too? How um, they're, they're, they're handling it. You know, they, you know, my son has a rare condition called uh, San Filipino syndrome. Mm-hmm. It's basically like a childlike dementia. Oh wow! And, and and he only, you know, the life expectancy is only between ten to twenty years. Oh my gosh! Okay. Well. Yeah. So so just just say a prayer for us. We are definitely praying for him. Anything could happen, you know, to maybe help uh, with that in in the time that he does have. But I I love the fact that you're shining a light on JoJo, and I know that you're gonna make however long he's here count. Thank you, thank you. God bless you and your family and JoJo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, well, that was your shine a light on them. And if you guys couldn't get through, 800-292-5150 is a number. And when we come back, we got Yeetie. Let's talk about Bow Wow versus Michael Malden. That's Jermaine Dupree's father. We'll tell you what they're fighting over. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Out, out. Angela's spilling that Yeetie. Talk, talk. By the time he hits 70, here's what was said. If I don't find... The right female, but time I'm like 65, 70, yeah. I already got a <laughs> overseas. I'm grooming <laughs> to clean my, <laughs> make my bed, worship yeah. me till I die, and leave my son all the bread. I already got a male ready <laughs> on standby. My uncle put me onto that plan. Yeah, you know you're what I'm saying? toxic, Kim. Yeah, you're toxic. That's the whole thing. I'm not toxic. I'm not toxic because I leave. Last time a left me, it was second grade because I put gum in her head. Uh oh. Feel like some of his exes might chime in on that. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. It sounds a little toxic, you know, but that's Cameron and his take on his own personal situation. Uh, now, Jermaine Dupri's father, Michael Malden, who is a music industry executive, um, has brought a lawsuit to Bow Wow, and that is for the Scream Tour trademark, according to court documents that Hip Hop DX obtained. Um, Bow Wow should not be using that Scream Tour because it is a common law trademark, which means that he's been using it for so long that even though it wasn't uh, federally registered, it's still a common law trademark. He said he's been using that for his own tours for the past 40 years, and he did not uh, formally trademark the uh, formally trademark the name until two months after the Black Promoters Collective filed the trademark for themselves. He's also naming them in a lawsuit. In case you don't know, Bow Wow is planning a Scream tour. He did a video announcement and said, get your tickets. My youngins is ready to show out on that tour. Is going to be that girl, Lele, Young Dylan, Papa J, and more. So we'll see what happens with that. All right. And in another fun, nostalgic throwback, Kimora Lee Simmons is launching a new Baby Fat Fall Collections. It's back to the basics. Uh, that is what she's saying. The new fall collection is priced between $50 to $100. And it's available exclusively on babyfat.com starting today. So if you guys want to throw back to when you used to wear baby fat, uh, this is a good time to do it. It's going to have mini cargo skirts, cute crop tops, velour track suits, because that was a staple in the baby fat collection. And the five pocket jean is back. She said, we were the originator of that with that kind of stretch that's just very different. These days, there's a couple of brands that have that, but that's our classic fit. That's my classic five pocket jean. So get ready for that. All right, and shout out to Usher. His streaming numbers, since he announced that he is going to be doing a halftime show with the Super Bowl, have really jumped up. So even though Usher's been doing his thing for quite some time now, everybody has been going to his uh, Vegas residency. Now that he's announced that, the those streams have gone crazy. Um, so shout out to him for that. And uh, I know we'll all be watching him. I can't imagine, like, this is probably going to be up there, I think, with some of the best halftime shows that we've ever seen. And Tom Brady has a scripted limited series called The Patriot Way that's in the works. Uh, and so now that he is retired for good, we assume that he's retired for good. He is making sure that he's handling his legacy. It's going to chronicle his rise from six round NFL draft pick to his half dozen Super Bowl wins with the Patriots, the Aaron Hernandez, Spygate and Deflategate scandals. And of course, his battle of wills with head coach uh, Bill Belichick. So get ready for that. Actually, even though I'm not the biggest football fan, this definitely sounds like there's a lot involved with it. I'll be watching that. I know um, Eddie, who's in here right now on the boards, is going to be watching that, too. Yes. He can't wait. All right. Cardi B has 
expressed how difficult it is to record the clean version of certain songs like bongos. Imagine trying to do a clean version of bongos. You have to do it for radio. But here's what she had to say as she was talking to Hot Ones. What's it like to record a clean for radio version of a Cardi song? Annoying. Like, yeah, yeah. So annoying. Like, because I just did it like practically two weeks ago. And I was like so over it because it's like my new song. I'd be like, eat this like a plum. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So like, you know, I'm doing the clean version and it's like, all right, baby, it up like a plum. And it's like, no, it's still you still can't play that for pop radio or whatever. And I'm like. Baby, eat these peaches and plums. <laughs> <laughs> and I was so over it. <laughs> that actually would be cute as a kid's bop song and have like fruit dancing across the stage. If y'all saw the sexy red, the teacher who, um, you know, was was playing ski and had the kids singing along, but doing like an educational version. I could see eat these peaches and plums. Maybe I could use that when I reopen the juice bar. As a theme song. What do you guys think? All right. Well, that is your yee tea. And when we come back, we have About Last Night. That's where we discuss what we did last night, how it happened. Maybe Mina will be here by then. But the traffic is crazy today in New York because of the weather. It's way up with Angela Yee. So, About Last Night. Last night. Last night. Here's how it went down. Yes, it is way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And look who made it in. New Mano. New Mano. Made it. Yes. It's like a hurricane out there. Listen, the flooding is crazy. I don't know what's going on, but I know they canceled a whole lot of flights. So if yeah. you were planning of to course. travel and it of has course. to go through New York, of you course. can forget about this it is today. A hurricane. This yeah. is- God is angry. The angels is crying. Mm-hmm. But, but Mano, thank goodness you made, made it. it in. All right, let's talk about what you did last night. You oh, had an man. exciting night. Had a, had a good night, you man. You had a Lamborghini to, outfit. Right. I went to Lamborghini Granite. Shout out to my guy, Drew. Uh, uh, Lamborghini is unveiling a new Lamborghini. Mm-hmm. It's coming out next year. They're not, not, not going to have the, uh, the Aventador no more. What is that, the truck? No, no. I, truck mean, I don't been, know anything the about truck, The truck been out. The, the year has been out. But this this new one, I think it's called a, a, a hill toe or something like that. Let me look it up. Yeah. Let me do a deep dive. It's coming next year. So I was at the event. Shout out to Styles P. He was there too. Okay, Styles yeah. P. Yeah. Um, and I just want to keep talking about because I was actually uh, watching right. your Instagram page. Right. right. And this is for my city challenge that's yeah. been going on. And going I crazy. see a lot of women. Yeah. Because that's what I was looking for. The you women looking are kind for of that. running things in hip hop. Right. Right now, so a lot of women have joined mm-hmm. this challenge. You took the first verse off the song, mm-hmm. and people get to submit their verse to represent right. their city, and then they'll be able to. You'll be streaming in right. certain cities, like the best. Yeah, the best verse in any city. That's I'm, hard to choose. I'm a, it, it is, but you know, it makes it easier when you, when you got to do city by city because it's like it's not everybody against each other. Right. So you got the best verse in in, in Connecticut or Hartford, then I choose like that. So well, Hartford um, is in Connecticut. Right. That's what I'm saying. So you, you'll do Hartford, but not all of, not nope. the whole state. Okay. But if you, right, if you had the best verse in Waterbury, that's something totally uh, different. Middletown. Right, Middletown is New York. <laughs> uh, no, no, Middletown in Connecticut. So I went to college. Oh, okay. I, mean, I, was, I, was, I, I don't know if anybody heard of that, that town. Shout out to everybody in Middletown, Middletown. Connecticut. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of a lot of a lot of ladies been having a lot to say. Yes. Uh, shout out to Kaya, baby. Uh, she sounded uh, good. Mariah Lynn. Yes, Mariah Lynn. You posted her she yesterday. It. Yeah. Um. I have a friend from Omaha who's going to be doing her verse soon. Yeah. I, I was on a group text with her. She's actually getting someone she's to not, write her verse. She's not just a own, she's not just a brand. She's, she's her own, own brand. brand. Yes, Jasmine yeah. brand. She's getting her verse ready and she's yeah. very serious about it. She's got writers <laughs> And everything. All right. But you had yeah. a couple of really good ones yeah. um, from New York. And one woman listened to Alexa, right? Yeah, she murdered. All right, but let's hear it. it. She's from my city. Pull up to the city. I'm Liddy. I just made a chat. Just made a chat. Summer over. I sit on my Timmy. So who want to step? Yeah. Queen in New York. Be repping for Queens. Like, why would I lie? Roll up right off of that age of 18. So I got a soul spot for L.I. Yeah. Throw my stiletto. My hero is my hello. Okay. Yeah. She made it her own. Mm-hmm. Killed it. This is gonna be hard for you to pick. No, it's it's gonna be Between it's gonna be people, cool. I feel like Queens did a lot, and, and I you know, know Brooklyn went crazy. You know what's crazy? She's like Han Kaya baby is both from Queens. <gasps> I might have to just take my second verse off and just. 
Yeah, you got to pick. Make it, yeah, and make it done. I wonder what Detroit is looking like, because you know. I did get something from Detroit. Okay, all right. Well, shout out yeah. to everybody who's been joining the challenge. Last night I was with my attorney because I think, you know, today is National Coffee Day, and I am planning to open up another shop. And yeah. so we were having conversations um, about that. Yeah, I, we got to really get to this me drinking coffee. Oh, yeah, we're going to do that. We, we have to, have to that. do this. Because there is no reason I have this beautiful DeLonghi right. La Specialista come in and really machine film it. in yeah. the studio with my Coffee Up List People Coffee, and you have never tried it. Never and, tasted coffee. And people, sometimes you come in here, Mano, because they're like, you've been out all night saving the city, <laughs> and they're like, give Mano some coffee, please. <laughs> and we need to do that. All right, well, that was about last night. When we come back, this is something that you love. Tell us a secret. Tell us a secret. People <laughs> hate when Mano's not here for Tell Us a Secret. Yeah. Before Fortunately, you made it in today. Made it. All right, God said, we got to get Mano in here for Tell Us a Secret. <laughs> 800-292-5150 is a number. Call us up. We want to hear your secrets. Mano will not judge you. 800-292-5150. Call us up and tell us a secret. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Way Up. Shh. This is a judgment-free zone. Tell us a secret. Yes, it is Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela tell Yee. Us and Mano is here. New Mano. New Mano. And we were, okay. Now, just so you guys know, our, our board up Navy couldn't make it in. Is mm -hmm. he going to make it in? We don't know. But Brooklyn, and I will say he's not lying, okay? Because there's definitely there. a lot of footage of all of the, uh, you know, he's from Brooklyn. He lives in Brooklyn. Of the flooding that's going on. Now, the first thing Mano said is, what about the rats? Where's the rats? Like, what happens to the rats? And I did a deep dive. And it turns out that rats are excellent swimmers and they can also hold their breath for almost three minutes and swim underwater. So they'll be okay. Right, but what if it's too much water? They three, said uh, three rats can, have over. been recorded swimming over a mile and they can swim and shred water for up to three days. <laughs> they better than me. I don't even know how to swim. <laughs> what? All right, well, anyway, it's time for Tell Us a Secret. 800-292-5150 oh is a number. Call us up and let us know uh, whatever it is that you want to maybe just relieve yourself yeah. of the burden of having this secret. We're not going to judge you, right, Mano? Nah, come talk to us, baby. Yeah, come talk to us. You know? All right, 800-292-5150. Anonymous caller, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Mano's here, too. Relax, Mano. Relax. All right, you want to tell us a secret? Okay, so for the past year, um, since I broke up with my ex, I have been using his phone number to get his gas rewards. <laughs> Okay. His gas so you know how you go in and then you put in the phone number? Mm -hmm. That's not a bad thing, yeah, though. He works in, yeah, he works in lawn care, and I know he fills up almost every other day. And those points <laughs> add up, and gas is expensive. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. That's actually funny. Yeah, though. that's pretty slick. So what happens if he finds out? She's cut well, off. Well, that's the thing. I don't know how he has it yet. Oh. <laughs> He's probably not even paying attention. He's just going to get his gas, putting his number in. And not even noticing it. I've sure. been doing that with like GNC at the um, for vitamins. You put the number in and you get the right, rewards. It's right. like, oh, you have a coupon. You're like, okay, I'll so use it. it. Yeah. It's ten cents off every time. I love it. <laughs> so you only you doing it for ten cents per gallon. Per gallon. Yeah, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah that gallon. that definitely adds up. And you probably be getting like the um, premium gas too. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you. I'm not mad at that. <laughs> I appreciate y'all. Have a good one. See? She's like, see, I feel good. Nobody judged her. Yeah, because you like that <laughs> slick. Hey, Anonymous Caller. Um, I'm here and Mano's here, and we're ready to hear your secret. What's up, guys? So when I was in college, I used to have a really bad relationship with my roommate. He was a real d Um, So he had, like, this girlfriend that basically always stayed at our room, and I never had, like, the room to myself ever. Mm. So every time that I would bring a girl back and I had to turn around or figure something out because he was in there with his girlfriend. Wow. I would then clean the toilet with his loofah. His what? His loofah. His loofah. What he uses to clean his body with in the shower. Yeah, it's, like oh. a, it's like a sponge, but for your body. Oh. You know, like a... Um, right. I, I we call use washcloths. We use... Yeah, I, But wash a loofah is different. It's okay. like a sponge it's more... That, Girls yeah. use that. Wow. Well, don't judge him no, I'm for just using saying. a loofah. It's the thing that's he little a, fuzzy Men thing. use loofahs, too. No, no, Stop no, it. No, we don't. I mean, I use a loofah, too. No, yeah. You probably still use a uh, loofah, uh, don't you? All right, so he would clean the toilet with the loofah. That's disgusting. It wouldn't yeah, be. Yeah, but should've... he would block, he would C-block me, so I was sick and tired of it. So I was just like, someone's got to pay for this. 
So, you know. You should have let him know you did it. No, you shouldn't. It's even, uh, first of all, that's disgusting. You know, they probably would have fought. Okay. He yeah, don't he sound like a fighter. He was way bigger than me. Yeah, he's so way just, bigger than me. You're, 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 <laughs> a, you're a sneaker. Oh, that's disgusting. All right, well, thank you for sharing. And you know, sometimes the toilet be having like the ring around oh, it. Oh, God. And if you go in and you take a... You violated. And mm -mm -mm. you know, you be in there splattering all over. No, never. Never. Okay. <laughs> well, we well, know skids. Well, thank you for sharing. That's why you got to change your loofah frequently. Maybe yeah, every day. Loofah. I never heard that word. A loofah. All right, well, thank you for calling. Thank you. What's up, Anonymous Caller? How are you? I'm doing all right. Good. Well, it's me and Mano here. We're not going to judge you. You want to tell us a secret? Okay, I slept with my child's father, little brother, and I slept with the next door neighbor's husband. You just a freak. Wait, she slept with the next door neighbor's she husband? She slept with her child's father's yeah. little brother I mean, and the next door neighbor. Ooh. Yeah, he came on to me first. All right, and you oh gave that gosh. away. It's okay. I sure did. Okay. Hey, hey, listen, you got to own who you are. I, I respect it. What's your exactly. relationship with your child's father? I don't have one with him. Okay. So you should, don't stop hey, there. You should just he, knock, knock the whole building off. I only slept with one of his brothers because I was going to do both. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, you think oh he God. knows? Yeah. Uh, he don't know. Mm -mm. Okay, and you still talk to... I hope to, he never finds out. You still talk to the little brother? Uh, Occasionally. Oh, I mean, this is just who you are, right? <laughs> exactly. This right. is who I am. I, I, I like a person that, that owns who they are. I respect that. Don't <laughs> I, stop there, though. That's exactly. not what I expected from Mano. No, just keep knocking knocking everybody <laughs> off. Pound town. Has it, well, I have to show an example now. I don't want to be a thought anymore. Okay, she's no, it's not. No, don't retire. It's, it's too early, baby. She got it. She got it over with. <laughs> she's don't like, retire. okay. She got her get mm -mm -mm. back. What about exactly. that? Exactly. But I will say the neighbor thing is a little. Are you cool with your neighbor? Oh no, we got into it yesterday. You ain't really a legend until you knock off a couple of neighbors. Okay, no. Do oh, that. No, I'm not doing none of that. She I'm already got beef with these people. <laughs> All right, well, thank she you for don't calling. Know. I'm so bad. <laughs> thank you. All right, for fine. sharing. I gotta think who's my neighbor alright well that was tell us a secret 800-292-5150 is a number in case you couldn't get through you could always leave a message and when we come back we have Yee let's talk about Ice Spice on the cover of Variety we'll tell you some of the things that she had to say about her friendships and about girls who pretend to be empowering for other women it's Way Up with Angela Yee yo she about to blow the lid up off this pot let's get it oh yeah Angela's spilling that Yee Tea come and get the tea that crazy wow. at the Jets game. Wow. Yes. So um, among... That's, that's crazy. Aside of all of that, a lot of people are commenting on their relationship. Now, Mark Cuban um, was saying that Taylor Swift should date a Dallas Mavericks player if things don't work out. <laughs> Taylor, if you're listening, sorry, Travis, break up with him. I got a bunch of good-looking single guys that play for the Dallas Mavericks. Oh my God. Wow. I got you. I got you. Wow. Because he knows. He's a marketing guy. And he knows. You see the amount of attention that this is getting. And even Jason Kelsey, t uh, Travis's brother, is talking. You know, he plays for the Eagles. And here's what he had to say on Sports Radio 94 on um, Wednesday. Are what they base, on first uh, base yet? I would hope, but I, I have no idea. I, I have gotten no inclination from Travis as to uh, what his... Uh, batting percentage has been or anything like that yeah does he seem more like a gentlemanly take it slow guy or is he a all eight cylinders i would say with this one it definitely seems like he is going above and beyond to be uh, a gentleman okay so yeah basically asking him did he did he hit yet yeah or you know he's at first base so that just means kissing really yeah right isn't they first base is kissing what's second base yeah groping what? Okay, yeah, you could call it that. So and fondling. Touchy what's what's feel? third base? Every every way, everything. Third base is what? All the way. Oral. Home run. Okay, and no? then home run is all the way. Oh no! Nah. I didn't know that. I yeah. so they they, I they, they running around holding hands. They run, they holding hands like I seen them at the game. Yeah, hands. yeah. I mean, it's something going on. Uh, and speaking of Taylor Swift, by the way, for people who resell tickets to concerts like a Taylor Swift concert, Beyonce, or even sporting events like Lionel Messi's Miami games, you are now going to have to pay taxes. So imagine you're reselling your tickets. Wow. Only, And I guess a lot of times people like cash app the money or do that in some way. Uh, finance, unless they give you cash, I guess you could. Right. 
get away with it. But people put their tickets on StubHub or Ticketmaster to resell them. So now you got to pay taxes when you uh, Mm. think you're you're getting some making a profit. I guess it's like capital gains. <laughs> All right. Now, Ice Spice is on the cover of Variety, and she talks about a lot of different things, including the rumors of her being an industry plant. She said, a lot of people have thrown that in my face, like, oh, I've never seen anything happen so quickly. She needs to be studied or she's a plant. She said, I just let people believe whatever they want to believe. To be honest, I don't really mind all the rumors. At first, I did. But now I'm at a point where I understand that just comes with this lifestyle. She also talks about her Duncan ad with um, Ben Affleck, and she says that she is a marketing effing genius. She said, people Mm. be trying to act like I'm dumb. And I'm just like, I'm a marketing effing genius. I feel like that just comes from being from New York, having to be quick on your feet, having to be witty and having a fast comeback. All right. In addition, she also talked about her friendships and relationships with Nicki Minaj and, of course, Taylor Swift. Uh, She said, that's my sis about Taylor Swift. We were talking about a bunch of things. She's so funny. We were sipping on a little something, something, just chatting and vibing. Mm. And so... Yeah, and you know she is uh, working with Nicki Minaj as well. Nicki Minaj is helping guide her career also. So um, yeah, and I I saw that it went viral of also of her just talking about people who pretend that they want to help, and it turns out they're really mean girls behind your back. Hmm. All right, so that is Ice Spice. Make sure you check out that full interview on her cover for Variety. And Jeezy and Jeannie Mai still live together even though they're getting divorced. Are they sleeping in the same room? According to reports, they just see each other as they're going in and out and about their business. But I would think they're not sleeping in the same room if it's a little bit awkward for them. They do have a one year old. So I'm sure as they're trying to figure out what's going to happen. Jeannie Mai is still fighting for her marriage, according to reports. Yeah, I've been in a situation like that. I know how that feels like when a lady moves out the room and is on the other side of the house. And you're there, like, you not wanting to other. run into each other. Right, but you see each other in the kitchen. You can't bring anybody home, though, right? Not at all. That'd be disrespectful. All right, well, that is your Yeet. And when we come back, we have Under the Radar. These are the stories that are not necessarily in the headlines, but we do feel like they're just as important. These stories are flying under the radar, and I got some good ones for y'all today. Um, you know, the story about the neighbor, right, this white neighbor that hosed the black neighbor that was having a gathering with his friends and family. We're going to talk about that because imagine you're just having a nice little dinner outside in your home and then your neighbor comes out and starts hosing everybody. I couldn't imagine. I would have called Mano. Yeah. It's way up in Angela Yee under the radar next. (laughs) I got news. This is the news that relates to you. These stories are flying under the radar. The news. I got news. This is the news. Yes, it is way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee and Mano is here. Man, I'm right. Hey, hey, Eddie, thank you, brother. For real. <laughs> and it's time for Under the yeah. Radar. The flooding is so bad here in New York that our board up Navy's not here. But yeah. fortunately, the producer for The Breakfast Club is filling in Navy's right now. caught in the hurricane. And Eddie don't do this, okay? He don't run boards. He, well, yeah. So this is amazing. And he's a boss. He's like, I don't do this. But um, we appreciate you. Now, what I love is Mano gets very fascinated by these stories, too. I was showing him this whole story about what happened. Um, this was in Queens, and it was a very prominent doctor, Eve Duraso. He actually is the first person that took the vaccine, the first doctor in New York. Mm-hmm, that and, took it. Yeah, that took the vaccine for COVID. And so... Um, his neighbor, Marcus Rosebrock, actually hosed him and his guests down. They were having a celebration last year, and it was at his home in Forest Hills, right? Mm-hmm. They were having a nice little party in the backyard, and the neighbor, uh, I guess, didn't like the music that was playing and wanted them to stop whatever they were doing in the backyard and hosed all of them down, him wow. and all of his uh, attendants for the party. Uh, One of the people that was there, the chef was actually the winner of Rocco's Dinner Party from Bravo. I mean, it looked like a very nice event, a beautiful group of people. And as this was happening, the neighbors actually, I mean, as as it was happening, he actually filmed his neighbor, Marcus Rosebach, with the hose. Here's what it sounded like. Our video statement, the neighbor put water on everyone at Rose's Rose's party. We're calling the cops. Yeah. Could never be me. Could never be me. Could never. Can you imagine? I couldn't imagine. And they said this was just dehumanizing. It's kind of... If I'm assaulted, then I have to assault back. So it, it would be all bad for me. 
Yeah, so that video has been released. He was having a 47th birthday party for his mm. sister. And imagine that it was 19 of them. They were all black and Latino except for one white guest. And then the white neighbor came and did that. Now, the white neighbor on his behalf is saying that he is getting death threats and he fears for his children Cap. after being accused of racism. He's denying racism. Cap. He said his kids are already scared. We had to let them know what was going on because there are a lot of black families in the area. Oh, but it is not you like that. should have never done that. He said, Period. we had to inform the school, too. I'm a class parent, and I volunteer at the school. But we had to tell them because rumors spread. There was still much more to be discovered about what happened. But I can't say any more because my attorney told me not to. Oh, he also says he fears he could lose the home that he shares with his wife and children amidst the fear. And he has since been installing additional security cameras and that this has destroyed them. Well, you should think. <laughs> Just like to talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee T. Way up. It is a monsoon out here. Yeah, it's really bad. In New York, it's really bad. Um, Hurricane Ange. I'm nervous to go home and see what my basement looks like with mm, flooding. Mm, mm. All right, well, let's talk about Bobby Altoff and her interview with Offset. It came out yesterday. Um, and she's the one that does those awkward interviews. Right. She did the one with Drake. Uh, right. She did Funny Marco. She did Shaq. She did Jason Derulo. Mm -hmm. But she is getting those interviews. Okay. Right. We see. And there were some awkward moments. Here's one of them where she tried to come for his outfit and then he responded. No, I'm really fly though. And it's like, you don't get it. Okay, I was, I was trying to understand. You don't have to be so mean. I'm not being mean. I'm not being mean. It's just you don't get it. So I'm very passionate about the people that don't get it because they need to get it because they dress like you and then they be lost. Mm -hmm. Oh. Like, why would you go 2000s tank with the tank. open button up? <laughs> I don't claim to be into fashion. You do. If that was the case, and you would have just came in here with a big ass hoodie on and some sweatpants, you you really tried to you put that together. It's just not all the way together. <laughs> I mean, he was definitely letting. She looks so he awkward. On her. Then at the end, she told him to leave. He's like, "No, this is my hotel room." But you my leave. thing is, that's what she. That's what she does, right? right? So that's what she wants. That's the desired effect, right? Yeah, I don't know if she's happy about it or not. Because then I think the problem was that after this in an interview uh, with Dave Portnoy from Barstool, mm -hmm. and she was a completely different person. She was regular, you know? So people were like, oh, you sit with white people and now you're okay. Really? But then you do these interviews in our culture. And I think we have a problem with people like showing up and she... It acts like she knows nothing about you. But she does. Yeah. She yeah. does. That's why she's doing the interviews. Yeah, apparently. All right. And speaking of interviews, uh, Bethany Frankel's podcast, Be a Good Person, Nene Leakes was on. And she was talking about the treatment that she got on Bravo as a black girl compared to the White Housewives on Bravo. Here's what she had to say. My treatment is 100% different on the show than yours. My feelings were they pretty much said... F that black b Vicky is back over there working and everything is fine. Lisa Vanderpump walk off the show, never return. She still got Vanderpump and she can still sit over there and talk to him all day long if she want to. Teresa can go to prison and stay for 10 years and they'll wait till she get back and then the show will start again. Okay, but the black girls do not get that same treatment. Mm. Right, and she talks about a lot of different specific instances um, when filming the show. Also about being the only original housewife on the show and how she was only given six episodes out of the 18. And she said the reason they told it was we can tell you're unhappy. But all the original housewives on the white shows would be on all the episodes. And she said uh, Bravo executives allegedly tried to pressure her into confronting Candy during a pivotal season and she refused to do it because of the Black Lives Matter movement. She didn't want to engage right. in conflicts within the cast and they wanted her to come for Candy and she just wouldn't. All right, so a lot of things to unwrap here and I feel like she's been saying this you know, for quite some time. I so believe, hopefully... I believe she got a point. If anything, they can address this in a way to, to positively do things differently mm -hmm. in the future and take her concerns at face value and, and as valid. Right. All right, now Home Depot is saying that surveillance footage shows that Tyrese is lying about racism. He has a $1 million lawsuit against them, and they said that there is video evidence backing them up. They responded to Tyrese's lawsuit, um, and they said that he came into their store, bought a bunch of items to the cash register. The cashier scanned everything. He then went back for more shopping. He left the register for 25 minutes. The cashier cleared out his transaction. And now Tyrese is saying that there was a computer glitch that caused a delay, and he believes because of that delay, 
People started recognizing him. He felt uncomfortable. He went to the parking lot instead of staying around. And that's when the people who were in the store did not finish the purchase with his card. Um, they, yeah, so he had to come back so in. So what, what does the uh, footage show? Um, I guess he's saying that Tyrese walked away to do some more shopping and was gone, so the cashier had to clear everything out. It wasn't a glitch, mm. I guess. I don't know. But Tyrese posted he was one of Trump's largest donors, giving $7 million to his campaign. When Marcus announced in 2019 that he would financially support the Donald Trump 2020 presidential campaign, it took a cause for a boycott of Home Depot. And he said, the Trump supporter attempts to slander me. I should have known the fact that spent tens of millions in your establishment, the footage of your team and staff's blatant racism and discrimination is very clear so we'll see where this lawsuit goes I see all right well that is your yeetie and you know it's a Friday so you know we got new music new Friday music. today a lot of new music is out today I'm trying to find album sales numbers from last week because I know there were some new albums out last really? week really we want to see how people do anybody we know um, I gotta see I'm waiting for the numbers to come out but okay. uh, new music Friday we'll talk about it it's way up with Angela Yee hey. no, 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 no. Now, yeah, she back at it. Bring it, bring in the back. back, back. Way up with Angela Yee is on. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and of course, Jasmine Brand is here with me. Yes, I'm here. And Mona Scott Young is here also. I'm here. Now, you're lucky I still talk to you because last time I saw you, I beat you senseless. <laughs> Wait, no, what happened? I mean, that's so, that's no, context. not beat me hey, senseless. Oh, like no, that. no, no. Not like that. Oh, Jesus. I don't believe I don't that. I think either one of us. In a cooking competition. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. No, don't All say right. it like that. That was pretty impressive. Okay. Yeah, because she you, was talking a lot of smack. She well, bought yeah, her she own is. sauce. I just she put, is a but, no, no, no. I brought my own combination of marination. See, now they I'm said that Indian. wasn't allowed. Oh, mm, did well. they? I don't remember that. But anyway, <laughs> mm-hmm. after I was done. But who won? Who, who? I won. Of course, yeah, she won. Like, oh, okay. yeah. chicken. No, but no, I would no. say Mona's a great cook. Oh, thank you. You know, but, Did you um, taste my jerk that day? Yeah. I tasted a little bit. Yes. It was good. Okay. All right. Well, let's get into it because um, so many things are happening. Uh, what we're talking about today, though, is a new film series, Love and Murder, Atlanta Playboy. Love and Murder. I like to say it like that. Oh, Love, Love and Murder. murder. <laughs> and Tay yes. Diggs is actually starring in it. And there's a lot of cameo appearances in it. Yes. Tay Diggs and Keisha Sharp. She does and such Keisha a great Sh- oh my job. Gosh. They have such a great chemistry they together. Do, yeah. So it's two parts, right? It's two parts, yes. And I'm not going to give anything away by saying this because they tell you in the very first line. Yes, what happened? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it but opens. The, yeah. the whole point of it is, yeah, it's a passion thriller, right? Right, it's a passion thriller. It's based on this guy Lance Herndon. Um, back in the late '90s, he was like a huge tech entrepreneur, one of the first black tech entrepreneurs in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. He was a local celebrity. All the fly parties and the fancy cars, and he had a huge house. But he also was an like notorious, a notorious womanizer. It felt like he had a sex addiction. I yes. Was, that, yes. It did. It, it did. did. Yes. This yes. This isn't yes. based on anything true, though. It is. Was, it is. It is. It's a rip from the headline story. And I you didn't can, realize that. You can actually Google. Yeah. 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 He's. Uh, oh, this makes it even more juicier. Exactly. So he was like <laughs> this huge womanizer. So. I mean, when he was brutally murdered, it was this whole who done it because right. he had off so many women. Right. He had all these business partners that were trying to get rid of him because he was taking over on the business scene. Mm-hmm. So it was one of those. You know, that's so interesting. We just had um, so one of our friends from Detroit, right? Dennis Reed, he does these series. So Shanquella Robinson, the mm-hmm. woman who was um, unfortunately yep. murdered. Mm-hmm. I saw was, that when you guys did that. Right. Interview. And so mm-hmm. the family was very upset with him um, for actually doing But they changed the names. Mm-hmm. The storyline was different. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But it was inspired by that But it situation. was definitely yeah. inspired by um, a true story. And so sometimes it's kind of like, and I get it because we love a true story. We love right. something that's inspired by real things that have happened. And sometimes it does help reopen, mm-hmm. you know, a case. Yeah, because I think you mentioned that, that it got mm-hmm. attention around yeah. the case. But sometimes, you know, it's a little early. Right. Right. Sometimes yeah. it's just and this a little is, too soon. And, it, did, and this is from a while. From this the is 90s. from 1996. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Did you all have a conversation with the family or had they ever? Had <laughs> no, because there was already a book. This was an adaptation a of a book. Mm-hmm. So there had already been a book written. And if you look it up, there are all those true crime shows. Yeah. yeah. This story in particular has been covered on a few of those crime shows. Right. But 
you figure not that it gets any easier, right. but I think that's also something to take into consideration. Right, timing. Like when we were doing hip hop homicides, that was definitely something that we, you know, worked on and, and we did that pop smoke story. Yeah. Mainly Ooh. because of fifties right. mm-hmm. involvement, mm-hmm. right, and his attachment. But you know, you just kind of wanna let a little bit of time go by for the family. Right now, Jasmine Brand and I are talking to Mona Scott Young. And you've worked with Missy Elliott from the beginning. From the beginning, the very mm-hmm. beginning. And we're having like a crazy year in this, the 50th year of hip hop. Right. So you've been you know. with her throughout and still. Throughout her entire career, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that's amazing because yep. Missy Elliott seems like the coolest person. By the way, first um, hip hop woman to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall first, of Fame. Major. Yep. That has to feel good, man, to have somebody like Missy who's like, you know, y'all are clearly like ride or die for each other <laughs> yep. from yep. the beginning. And you must know everything. And she's so chill like she seems very mm, like down she minds her business missy's incredibly passionate because she's a cancer but she's also very private so it's it's beyond a client you know manager relationship right it's a friendship it's a sisterhood we go at it like she always says that you argue oh of course (laughs) really yes because she hard-headed no so am i (laughs) yeah you know yeah we but 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 heads in a healthy way like she just is very passionate about the things she's passionate about Mm -hmm. and so so, you know, she doesn't need yes men around her, right? right? Nobody needs yes men around them. And that's, I think, a lot of times why I end up like, like she'll say, boy, you are so brutally honest. You'll just keep it a thousand. Right. You don't care. It's not that I don't care. It's just I don't need to blow smoke up your <laughs> You know, there's so, many other, there are so many other people that will. I don't yeah. need to be one of those. What, what's the silliest know? argument you and, you and uh, Missy have gotten into? The silliest? Yeah. Um, <laughs> it'll be something like, you know, number of dancers like Missy wants what she wants Mm -hmm. and that's the end of the story right Mm -hmm. and for 20 something years my job has been to make it happen (laughs) and so you know it'll be like I want 40 dancers on that stage well the stage only holds 10 (laughs) you know like (laughs) well uh, I don't know what you're gonna do because I need 40 dancers on (laughs) it exactly and sure enough day of there's 40 dancers on (laughs) that and bringing it to today you have Scarlet also, yes. you work with. Tell us how that happened. We uh, we just love Scarlett. You know what? Busta is another mm-hmm. one that I have a close relationship to. And um, he and Swiss Beats actually tag teamed and was like, <laughs> we need to talk to you. We need to talk to you. And that went on for like a couple of weeks. And I was like, okay, okay, what is it? And Busta was like, yo, we need you on this. And um, he sent <laughs> that me. That impersonation. Th- that was a bad impersonation of Busta. <laughs> I, I kind of liked it. I feel like I have a better Busta impersonation. <laughs> He was just like, I need you to check out this young girl, right? And so he sent me the page. And then my husband, who was like, look, you do not need one more thing on your plate. Mm -hmm. He, you know, checked it out as well and was like, yo, you got to do this. There's something special about her. Because I'm sure a lot of people have come to you before that and been like, can you Mm -hmm. manage this person or can you work with me? So for some reason, Scarlett, as a newer, younger artist, you really took to her. Yeah, Yeah, because there was something about, you know, not only what she had been through, but it was more her heart Mm -hmm. that she wanted this so badly right and I always say talent is just one small piece of the puzzle people you know there's a lot of talented people out there but they're all the other things that come along with it Mm -hmm. the drive the fire in the belly you know and um her backstory you know everything that she'd been through and the fact that she was able to channel that into her music I felt like okay DNA activated. (laughs) Got to put the hat back on and get back in there. And, you know, built a team around her. Shout out to Treva Williams. And, um, you know, my partner is uh, D. Salute the Mm -hmm. General Alima. So it's just like we've built this village around her. Busta, you know, everybody from Cardi you've seen, um, Mary J. Blige. You know, everybody is just like... Everyone's embracing her. Embracing yeah. her, yeah. All right, Mona Scott Young is here, and we're talking about everything, even things we're not supposed to, like love and hip-hop. But, you know, how can we not talk about love and hip-hop with Mona Scott Young? And she has a new show on BET+. Plus. It's called Love and Murder, Atlanta Playboy. It's way up with Angela Yee. Hey. Now, back. Yeah, she back at it. Bring it, bring in the back. back. Way Up with Angela Yee is on. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here, and we're talking to Mona Scott Young. Because we're talking about Love and Murder Atlanta Playboy, Mm -hmm. there's no way we cannot also notice there were a lot of people from Love and Hip Hop that also made features. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, we saw Carly Mm -hmm. Red, April, Young Jock, Jock, Yandy. Mm -hmm. I have a question about you using talent from Love and Hip Hop. Mm -hmm. Do you ever feel pressure? You know, like, Mm -hmm. I need to... No, no, not at all. I mean, (laughs) listen, I don't feel. No, um, it's really about 
here's an opportunity. I know these guys want to expand their brand, expand on their talents. Mm -hmm. They can act. You know what I'm saying? A lot mm -hmm. of them are really good. And so when the opportunity is there, I always just call and say, hey, I'm doing this project. Yeah, when I directed my first short, I called Yandy. You know, right. she did a great job with that. Now with this project. So, yeah. And Carly, too. She's been acting forever. Jock, I think, is just a phenomenal talent. <laughs> it's funny. Like, he, he just needs to be acting on a regular basis. He does. He's funny yeah. to me. He's and not no, even trying to be funny. No, that's what he's got natural comedic timing. Yeah. But I also think he's really versatile mm. and can do, you know, mm -hmm. something more dramatic as well. Um, Maybe you yeah. should manage him. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you know? <laughs> now he's like, that's a good idea. Right, right, John. right. No, that's where it's kind of like, Ugh, because of fuzzy. course everybody feels like, oh, why well, you did this and you didn't do me. You, I'm sure people think you have a favorite. I was going to say. Of course ahead, they Angela. do. I've heard it she over and over. Everybody thinks, oh, Yandy's your favorite. Yeah. No, she it's just be. that. She should be. No, you know what it is? She's been with me. Remember, Yandy started with me yes. as an intern. Mm -hmm. She wasn't even originally going to be on Love and Hip Hop. She wasn't even going to be on Love and Hip Hop. The scenes. I was constantly like, girl, you should be doing this. You know, you can represent a whole different, you know, side of women in hip hop, the business side of things. Mm -hmm. And she was like, no, no, no. Okay. And listen, mm -hmm. how, so you've been tied to that franchise for so long. And every time mm -hmm. something goes. 13 years. Yeah. Every time something goes wrong, Mona Scott Young is the person that people always go to. And I don't know that you still handle day-to-day. -day. Listen, it has been 13 years. That machine is self-sustaining. I'm not in the field. I'm not, And I know it's hard for people to understand that, which is why, you know, it's like a double-edged sword, right? You can't be like, oh, here I am to provide the opportunities and for the accolades and then be like, oh, that backlash. Don't, right. I'm know, not involved. Don't bug yeah. me with the backlash. So I know that people are going to have their narratives, what they want to believe, and I'm not about to sit there like this, going back and forth, oh, right? Oh, right, handled. Well, yeah, what was that? <laughs> Mona. That was, Mona. that was very simply that the network had put out their statement mm -hmm. and they had handled it. Right. So people were coming to me and what they don't understand is at this point, I see the show on the same basis that they see the show. Okay, so you're like, right? oh damn. She didn't... I, I'm not, you know, I'm not involved with the cuts anymore. I'm not in the field. The cast will tell you this. Mm -hmm. There is actually... <laughs> There's a group of black women on the ground making this show. The whole idea that everything, but that's been since day one. Right, right. right. So it's it's hard for me to say at this point, well, I wasn't there. And mm -hmm. so I, I, I let it ride and I hope that it, you know. You hope that. <laughs> it rides out yeah. and, and it corrects itself because I do believe that, you know, the network saw this as a teachable moment, mm -hmm. right? I know that they did some kind of a digital piece yeah. at the end of this, but um, yeah, I, I'm not day-to-day -day on the franchise you, anymore. I'm making movies now, Love and Murder, right. Atlanta scripted. Playboy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing scripted, making movies, expanding, you know, created a platform, created an opportunity, mm -hmm. right? Put it in the hands of folks. Shout out to LaShawn Browning, Antoinette Media, mm -hmm. Donna Ed Rochelle. There, are, there is a team, you know, okay. of black women doing this show. So, okay. Mona said, it's, it's not me no more. I, I'm just saying, <laughs> but, but but I get it though. Right. I understand why people still. We're going to always associate heavily you with Heavily associate. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Heavily associate. And look, I'm proud of the platform. I'm proud of the opportunities it has presented. I think we've seen a lot of good come from it in terms of what the cast has been able to go on mm -hmm. and do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they've prospered. And so, I, you know. And I think even the fact that certain people that you've uh, been in this industry with still want to work with you, like 50 Cent. Of you course, know, like of Missy course. Like Elliott, like yeah. a Busta Rhymes. Rhymes, yes. It does speak a lot to how people see how you move behind the scenes. Exactly. People who know me, that's why on my page it says, if you don't know me personally, I can't take it personal. Well, thank you so much for coming through. And I know as things are developing with all these new projects, you're going to give us a little heads up. Absolutely. So we have the information. I, I love this way up connection. I love this duo. Um, so thank you for having me. Do you ever walk out of interviews and be like, F them? <laughs> <laughs> no, I would have said it in the room. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> All right, well, Mona Scott Young, you guys, make sure you check out Love and Murder. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Love and Murder, Atlanta Playboy on BET Plus, parts one and part two. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me, ladies. Thank you, Mona. <laughs> 
And when we come back, it's time for some advice. Ask ye. 800-292-5150 is a number. Anything you need help with, let us know. We are here for it. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Hey, everybody. Whether it's relationship or career advice, Angela's dropping facts. No, you should, no, you should know. This is Ask Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee on National Coffee Day. I'm Angela Yee, and Mano is here with me. Yes, I am. All right, and it's time for Ask Ye. 800-292-5150 is a number. Call us up if you have any advice questions. Hello, who is this? Hey, Ye, it's Malik. Malik, what's good? Me and Mano are here, and we heard... Mano. What's up? We heard you coming in New York. I am, I am. Malik, where are you from? I'm actually from Chester, Pennsylvania, but I live in Virginia. Okay, all right, so you live in Virginia. So now, uh, why are you coming to New York? I need to do something different. I'm mm-hmm. turning 35, and people always say, do something big, be 35th. And, um, you know, New York is close, you know. So I okay. figured there's something to do. No, that is nice. Now, if somebody was coming to town for their birthday, they're turning 35. Right. Mayna, what are some things that we would tell them that they need to make sure they do? Come to Chelsea House. <laughs> That's all you got to do. No, come on. Come to the Chelsea House. Yeah, he means that. I mean that. Come to the Chelsea House. Okay. You have a great... You know, brunch if you come on a Saturday, great dinner. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, matter of fact, Saturday, tomorrow, it's fight night. Mm-hmm. We, we showing the fight. Got hookah, Ooh. drinks, ladies. You didn't invite me. I want to watch you the fight. always invited. You don't need yes, to invite. When are you coming? Um, I'll be there on the 6th, actually. My birthday's on the 8th. Okay. Oh. I'll be there from the 6th to the oh, 10th. Damn. Let's see what's on the schedule for the 6th in New York. Yeah, but uh, what kind of things are you into? I'm boring. I'm trying to get out there. Not like Mayno, but I'm trying to get out whoa, there. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I don't know if that was an insult or not, bro. Not like Mayno. Relax. Not Mayno. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, look, the six, I'm actually having a party. You should come to that. Um, okay. That's, okay. It's going to be downtown Manhattan at Daily Paper. I have my Coffee Uplifts People shop inside of the store, and it's our last um, party because we were doing these parties all summer. And so mm-hmm. it was supposed to be today, but because of the rain, washing everything out, it's going to be next week. So come see me at Daily Paper. It is like an after work thing. So it's from four to eight. Four. And we'll toast to you on that day at Daily Paper. And then okay. um, do you let, who are you coming with? Um, just a few friends. All right. So, yeah, bring all your friends. Yeah, they it's might want to go to the strip club after that, too. It's a free thing. So this is earlier in the day. Mano maybe will be at a strip club. <laughs> <laughs> so you could do that. What about... Um, I'm going to yeah. come to both of y'all events. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not having an event. I'm just He's eventful. Just I'm just talking like, with you about the strip club, Mano. Yeah, I mean... He'll just be there. I would have told yeah. you to go to some Broadway plays if you was going with on a date. I'm going but... to see Michael Jackson because of you. You talk about it all the time. So oh, MJ Michael the Jack- Musical. That's an amazing play. Yeah. Especially yep, if you're yep, a big Michael Jackson think. fan. Yes, absolutely. And then um, Chelsea House, other great restaurants. When you go to the play, um, Brooklyn Chop House Brooklyn is right Shop there. House. It's right down the block, so I would make a reservation there. It's fun. The music is good. It's a good vibe. Okay. Um, Lagos is right there, too. Go to Lagos. You should go to Lagos. Lagos is fun. Um, and they do hookah in there, right? Don't they mm-hmm. also have... Yeah, they mm-hmm. have hookah in there. So if you guys like hookah, definitely would be some nice, um, you know, ladies, ladies in there for the, for the guys. Okay. Well, thank you. I'm definitely going to hit you up and, and do the, the daily paper. So, All right. um, that's one thing. I hold everything else down and I'll do some research. But okay, All remember right, well, me. I'm gonna be there. Well, Malik, we look forward to seeing you when you get into town. Thank you, and have a good one. Nice talking to you, Mayno. All right, bro. Strip club. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, well, that was Ask Ye, 800-292-5150. And when we come back, you guys get to have the last word. Right now, I'm about to make some coffee for National Coffee Day. Y'all support us, all right? Go to Target and get some coffee uplifts people on today of all days. It's Way Up with Angela Ye. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in and get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Mano is here. That's right. And breaking news. Um, it looks like the person, a person, has been arrested for killing Tupac Shakur. Wow. 27 years later. Keefe this happened D, back right? in 1996. Yes, Dwayne Keefe D. Davis. Mm. And if you guys recall, he was saying that he knew who did it. Right. See, his problem was he was telling the whole story. He thought he had immunity. So he was going on all these podcasts and telling the story. And it was used against him. So he went and did this book. He went and did all this stuff. See, so what happened? He had got arrested for some conspiracy and then he, he he turned state's evidence he told and then he I guess he thought that he had immunity that he could just tell his story right so after he got out of prison he's just been telling the story and Ooh. listen he had, yeah he had his memoir Compton Street right. Legend and 
right now we don't have full details. We don't know the exact charge. It's not immediately clear. But he was arrested early this morning. Mm. Mayno, you actually shot Tupac in the movie. In the movie. People don't like you from that. In the movie, Remember when Ange. You said that yeah. Did not like yeah, you. I had I had some problems. I had you some did, smoke about did. that, Ange. That, it's just the movie. We acted. You know what? But people don't think about that. Like when yeah. you play a it's role like, like that. I hit you, you shot Tupac. Yeah, so, I mean, I think, you know, that's fascinating. This happened back in 1996. And he had previously admitted to being in the Cadillac, and no arrests have ever been made in the 27 years since his murder. But there's going to be more details, I'm sure, Mm. as as we keep following this story, okay? All right, well... um, that is our day. Shout out to Mona Scott Young for joining us. And make sure you watch her movie that's on BET Plus, Love and Murder. Another thing we'll be watching is the fight this weekend. Fight. Fight night. All right. Uh, Canelo versus Charlo. You said you, you have going, Charlo. Who are you going for? I'm going with Canelo Alvarez. Now, but you said before, off air, yeah, that you were going I'm, for, listen, for Charlo. Just you just want to bet against me. I just me. bet against you. You don't, you don't <laughs> We didn't even bet. You just don't want to be on the same All right, team. Well, get your outfit ready. <laughs> okay? Get your outfit ready. No, All I'm right? not playing with you. You guys always have the last where let's do it is way up with Angela Yee. Good morning. My name is Jeffrey Hill. I'm from the Mississippi Gulf Coast, and I want to shine a light on myself. I have a community outreach program called Better Way Your Options Saving Our Youth, LLC, and I'm just a local guy who did 22 years. I go out and share my testimony with the youth, and I just recently made a three-minute video that has over a million views, and I just want to shine a light on that. It ain't the mistake you make in life. It's a response to the area that counts. I don't know a million people, but my message has reached a million people, and I thank God for that. My name is Jeffrey Hill. Hey, Angela. I figured it was one time I was messing with this one girl. She had a dude, but she never told me who it was. When I found out who it was, it was one of my homeboys, and it was so damn good, I couldn't even stop messing around with her. So we messed around for, like, the past year. Hi, Angela. Love your show, as always, and Mayno. I just wanted to say you were talking about your throat and being kind of itchy and raspy. I would suggest to you that you get some clove tea. You can boil the cloves or you can just buy the tea bags and drink that on a regular, and you'll find there will be a change in the throat. It's great for public speakers. Also, to use raw honey. You can suck on the raw honey, or you can add it to your tea. And because you're so active, you know, just make sure you get a little downtime in for yourself, a little meditation, and you'll be back to normal in no time. God bless. Have a great day. I want to show the light on my cousin Mercedes. Today's her birthday. Mercedes is a great mom, great family, a good friend. And she's just always there for everybody. And I love you, Sadie. Happy birthday.